I've done some videos about reverbs already on my channel, and there has been discussions on social media asking me to do some more tips and tricks with reverbs, how we can be creative and how we can manipulate the reverbs. We will also decide who will get this giveaway, my one year celebration on YouTube giveaway, this nice reverb. So let's do it. Hi, my name is Roger. I work as a musician and I have my studio where I'm recording and mixing. And today we're going to do some tips and tricks about reverbs. If you like these kind of videos, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. That really helps me a lot. 80% of my viewers doesn't subscribe, so please. Let's go into it and a couple of simple tricks first. We're going to listen to the snare drum by itself, dry. And it sounds like this. If I would put a lot of reverb on that, it's going to be a mess because of all the ghost, no ghost notes also. So it sounds like this. An easy trick, just put a gate before the reverb. I just put a gate so only the loud parts of the snare drum trigger is triggering the reverb. Now it sounds like this. A trick you can use for many things, not only snare drums, of course. We're going to listen to the guitar. I have a muted guitar. It sounds like this. I want to pan this to one side, let's say the right side. And then I will go into a delay that is panned to the left side. So I will turn on that send and here we have a delay panned to the left side. I made the delay rather dark. You can see here on the filters. Uh, just so that the delay, is, the delay is like a ghost for the real signal, so to speak. And then I will send both of those tracks into the same reverb. So it sounds like there's a wall bounce in a room. Now it sounds like this with the reverb. And without the delay and the verb. We go to the roads, and the roads sounds like this. Let me find the place where it's playing. I have an EQ, a compressor, and an amp simulator on it. Uh, but it sounds very mono. Let's say that I want it more stereo. So I will go into a reverb first. First a reverb on the roads. Of course, I've exaggerated the things in this video, so you can hear them clearly. Uh, that makes a bit more stereo, but I wanted more. So I place a chorus after the reverb. The chorus also makes the reverb sort of its own living thing. Uh, let's listen first without the chorus and then I will put it in and you can hear the difference. So the chorus is actually doing a chorus on the reverb, not on the roads. Let's go, go to the vocal. I realize as the days go by, the things get easier. Say that we have a preference that we want a lot of reverb on this vocal. I think it's going to be a mess. Now I've exaggerated the S's a little bit in my vocal take also. But the, it's going to be a lot of S in the reverb. I realize as the days go by, the things get easier if... So what I did was that I put a de in front of the reverb and then also a channel EQ here, taking away the lows and the very highs where the S's lives. And now the reverb sounds like this, the vocal with the reverb. I realize as the days go by, 
The things get easier if we... The reverb is not as harsh. So you can use more reverb if you want to. Uh, let's listen to another reverb. We can do a dynamic reverb on the vocal. I usually do this with delays, but I can show you how, how you can do it with the reverb. This sounds like this. I realize as the days go by The things get easier if we try to What I've done is I place the compressor after the reverb with the side chain for my vocal. So when the vocal is singing, the compressor turn the reverb down, and when the vocal is not singing, it lets the reverb up again. So it's going to be more reverb between the phrases of the vocal and not so much in the phrases. I usually do this with delay, but so that is a subject for the delay video if it ever comes. Probably it will. I don't know when. Normal claps, right? And I put a reverb directly on the track. Just Logic's chroma verb, a room sound, one second long. More in the room, but I wanted something more. And when I raised the length and the amount of reverb, it didn't work. So I also did ascend to another reverb. And this reverb is nearly the same. It's a longer reverb, but uh, then I put a delay before the reverb with only wet signal. So this reverb comes one sixteenth note late. One sixteenth note after the clap. Also here I made the delay a little bit darker, maybe too dark actually. Um, Listen, without the first reverb, the reverb on the track. You get like a wall bounce, like there's a wall behind the people that are clapping. It's really cool in context with the whole song. You can use it. With this, I get a reverb sound without having too much reverb. But I'm actually using more reverbs, but not more reverb. Yeah. I have another clap that just hits the fourth snare hit. <laughs> Only like that. How should we do with that? Well, I wanted a lot of reverb on it, so we get a length to that clap. So I show the reverb here. But I hear that the reverb is fading too much. It's fading. It starts loud uh, the way I want it, and then the reverb fades. And if I make it longer, it's too long. So I put a compressor after the reverb, compressing the reverb signal. Now without the side chain, it just compresses the reverb signal, which makes the reverb signal go loud and then drop. It's not like a gate where it's cut, where it's cutting. It's just the fade is dropping later and faster. Listen. So that is a trick you can do with reverbs. And my last trick uh, is uh, sort of the same thing that we can automate on the snare drum again. We go back to that one. The snare drum, as we know, sounded like this. Let's say that I want that last beat, that last beat to be something else, something special. Then I made an effect chain here. First, a gate. That's just gating, so the, only the loud parts hit the reverb. Let's listen to that in solo. Very short open, opening. And then I have the chroma verb from Logic. Chamber setting, 1.6 seconds. Mm. 
and then a distortion. This is Devil Lock Deluxe. It, it's sort of a compressor distortion thing. It really crushes the signal to, you, you can't identify the signal after it's gone through this. It's really brutal. So I'm distorting the reverb signal here. And then I have a gate after that, so I can shorten the de decay. And then I just put an EQ on it to get rid of some low mud that interfere with my drums. So in context with all the drums, it sounds like this. I don't know if you like it or not, but it's a trick you can use if you want to. You can also place a chorus after the distortion and make it even weirder or a phaser or something. Another trick is to use this uh, wi stereo winding thing. I use that a lot on strings and horns and things like that, where I have the reverb a bit narrower in the verses and a wide reverb in the chorus. Please check that in mono if you're doing that, because all reverbs isn't mono compatible in the way that we want them to be. They can disappear when they are in mono. So uh, be careful with the stereo widening because the mono signal will disappear. So there you have some tips and tricks of how you can manipulate reverbs. I hope you found it interesting or helpful. Now let's see if we can find the person who will get this giveaway, this fine reverb. I have a jar here with names. I just wrote, wrote down names on the papers of the people that did what I asked them to do on my latest video about reverbs. Uh, and I think I will need an expert to help me pick the person that will get the reverb. So let's see if we can find an expert. I have found an expert. Bella. Can you pick one of those papers? Okay. I'm gonna pick this one. This one. And it says? Uh, ah. Xavier Radix. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Congratulations, Xavier. I, I hope it, that's the way you pronounce your name. I'm very sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Anyway, I hope you have fun with the reverb. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And fun in Swedish is kul. Kul. Until next time, Roger that.